Hi, I'm Bob with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in. Apologize for any background noise we may have going on. Um, I'm on a live factory floor, so kind of is what it is. Anyway, evidently I screwed up. This is what is called, uh, that we sell, it's called a bendicator. And it's to help you locate your bends. Um, so, you know, if you're building a roll cage or whatever you're doing, it'll help you locate it, put marks on your tube and all. Well, what happened is all this time, I thought I had done a video on how to do this years and years back when I originally developed this. And according to our tech guys, I never did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that wrong right now. Anyway, this is a bendicator. Um, let's go ahead first and talk about, um, well, let's just start off when you receive it, how to put the thing together. Go ahead, remove the bendicator from the foam in its box, and you will be presented with this right here. What we have to do now is we have to assemble the bendicator. There's only five parts, plus a couple of stove bolts and a couple of wing nuts. Let's go ahead and start the process by removing the wing nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my back pockets. So I don't drop them on the floor. What are the odds of me not dropping something? By the way, pretty, pretty slim. Yeah, me not dropping it is pretty slim. All right, this is what's called, an, I believe it's an outer retainer plate. It's been years since I developed this, so I can't remember, but it's a retainer plate. There's two of these on the Bendicator. I'll put that in my back pocket also. And what you've got is you've got the two stove bolts are gonna be going through the outer plate, and then you're gonna take the slider right here, and you're gonna place it on top of the two stove bolts so it looks like this right here. Now, go ahead and take the protractor arm that has all of the degree increments from zero to 90, go ahead and place that onto the slider so that you can see it, it's sliding around right here. Now, go ahead, take the other protractor. This one here now will have the size of the tube, see five and five eighths of an inch, hopefully the autofocus is working. And it will also have two indicators, a zero and a 90 degree indicator on that particular arm. You want that to be on top of this arm here with all of the engraving facing up. Go ahead, place that onto the slider. Now, let's go ahead and replace the outer plate onto the stove bolts. Now we can go ahead and take a wing nut, put one on, put the other one on. Holy cow, I didn't drop a thing, I, I'm, I'm amazed. Anyway, you're gonna end up with this right here. Now you've got this nice pivoting protractor that doesn't have a center pivot. Why does it not have the center pivot? Okay, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the features in the Bendicator before I show you how to use it. Each protractor has a 12 inch arm on it, each protractor arm. Now the metric ones are marked off in centimeters, the imperial ones are marked off in inches. We have a triangular slot right here, which will allow us to take a Sharpie magic marker, place a mark through the triangle onto the tube that we're bending to help us locate the bend once the tube goes into the bender right here. Now, the idea, the principle of operation, is we are working with the outside edge of the bendicator. We're trying to mimic the outside of a bend, like this right here. That's why we sell and make so many different versions of the bendicator, hundreds of them, I believe, because in the Imperial system, I think we make one for every eighth of an inch increment of this radius right here. And we also, in the uh, metric ones, I believe there are three millimeter increments. And of course, we make a large number of those also. But that's the idea. We're gonna mimic the outside of the bend right here. Now, that's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and look at the different arms. The lower arm, you have all of the degree marks on it, zero to 90. We can't do zero to 180. We don't have a center pivot, so we can't mark off that way. We can only do up to 90. Now, on the upper arm, you have two pointers. You have this one right here, and I'm gonna try to get it close enough we can see it good right here, and it's marked as zero. That is if you're doing any bends up to 90 degrees. So in other words, wherever, if we're doing a bend that is either straight, zero degrees, up to 90, we're gonna use that particular pointer and we're gonna read it directly. So for instance, right now, if you look at it, it's on 60 degrees, hopefully the auto zoom is doing its thing. 
That's how you would do it. Now, what happens when you go past 90 degrees? We are then going to use this pointer, the one that's marked 90, and we're going to add the degree increments to the 90. So let's just say we were looking for a 120 degree bend. By the way, it doesn't matter where the slider is when you lock it down. It could be anywhere in this groove. It doesn't matter. But if you look now, we should, you should see it's on 30 degrees. But clearly we've gone past 90. So we're going to add the 90 to the 30. We have a 120 degree bend. That's what we have right there. Anyway, that's the principle of, of operation there. Let's go ahead and talk about, well, most of it anyway. Let's go ahead and talk about the one other part that has to do with why there's no center pivot. And it has to do with ease of trying to figure out where to put a bend in a piece of pipe that's wrapping around a corner of another object. Now that corner, for instance, could be the corner of, like say, the front of a car. So let's say you're doing a bumper on the front of an off-road truck, you may want to use this, place it around the front of the car to find out what angles do I need to make that bumper to wrap around the fenders or where do I need to place it on the bend itself? So that's why there's no center pivot and that's what makes the Bendicator um, an incredibly valuable asset. Now, the Bendicator is mimicking a, a system that I put out almost 40 years ago, wow, 1982, that is um, basically um, called template bending. Let me go ahead and show you the principle of template bending and how this relates to it. This is what I refer to as a template. Now, I have a complete written description of how to do template bending is in all of the directions that come with all of our benders. So if you want to read that, just go to our website, www.jd, as in dog, to the number two dot com, JD squared, JD two dot com. And go to the top menu, support, go to our support portal and pull in the directions for any of our benders. At the back of those directions, you will find a section called template bending if you want to read a little bit about it. But the general idea is we're going to take a piece of metal, a piece of tubing, and we are going to bend it 90 degrees. Now you need to do this for every size and thickness and kind of metal that you're bending. And the reason is, is because you'll have different spring backs depending on what you're doing. So if you're bending chromoly, for instance, you're going to have a little bit more spring back than you would if you were bending DOM. DOM has a little bit more spring back than welded seam, etc. So that's um, why you would need a separate bent piece of metal for every size if you're looking for the utmost in accuracy. Now what I do, and I suggest this in the literature, is I took a, a conduit cutter, put it on the tube before I put the bend in it, and I ran it around the tube to put a mark in the tube, a permanent mark. Now after I did that, I loaded it into our bender, and I don't have the bender here, but I can explain it to you, with that straight edge mark at the edge of the die, the saw cut edge where the block welds onto it. Now, then I just go ahead and I make my 90 degree bend. Actually, I typically will bend a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter for template bending. Um, but you want to end up with roughly a 90 degree bend. And the idea is that, let's just say, we had this piece of tube right here, and this bend, wasn't here, but we need to get an accurate bend from this bend. Then we could take our template with our mark right here, place it, now normally I have this on the ground, I'm doing this flat, but I'm not going to move the camera. Um, and what I do is I lay it on the ground and then I slide this bend up and down until it's where I want it where I want the bend to be transferred to the other bender. And then all I do is I take out my marker and I put a mark on this tube lined up with the line on the template and it works flawlessly. It's, it's, I mean, it's really a great method. So if you don't have a bendicator or you don't want to buy one, just go ahead and use that method. It's free, it's easy, it works great. Now, how does the bendicator fit into this um, situation? Let's talk first about uh, the die itself because you'll need to know a little bit about that. All dies are made to not start bending at the edge of the die. 
there's what we call a lead in. And that's because when you start bending, you don't want to bend here because what it'll do is it'll punch a ledge into your tube. That's not good. So you want to start the bend further down into the groove. Now where that bend starts is the distance from the saw cut edge, this edge here, to where it's going to start bending, we refer to the lead in. Now in our jigs back there, whenever we machine and cut these, we typically set it up with a, five, a 7 8 of an inch lead in. Now on the smaller dies, the lead in is 5 8 It's a very easy thing to determine because all you got to do is imagine you've got a 90 degrees coming up from your center point right there, your center line where your tube's going. What is that distance to the edge of the die? It's that simple. That's called the lead in. So whenever we're going to do template bending, that's why we use a template because all of the spring back is already in the tubing. We don't, have to, we don't have to calculate spring back. We don't have to do anything. It's easy peasy. Now, on the bendicator, which is going to emulate that, that particular bend right there, what we're going to do is we don't have that mark as close. Let me pull it over here. We don't have this mark this close because we can't get to it. Just, it's just physics, right? So what I did is I put triangles on the bendicator at different locations. So on the really small ones, it's not going to be out four inches. It might only be out three inches or two and a half or whatever. But the bottom line is, is you're going to look at the triangle and you're going to see what is the increment that it's at. In this particular one, it's at four inches. So, whereas on this one, it worked out to be roughly seven eighths of an inch when we actually made it. This one, if we were to transfer the mark onto our tube, let's just say we were to place our bendicator on it and we're sliding up and down, looking to where we're going to put this bend. Once we figure out where we're going to put it, let me whip this out. Let's go ahead and use a marker <laughs> and put the mark there. Let me put this back. All righty. Now, you can't really see it. The tube's pretty dark, but there's a mark right there. Now, what that's telling us, that mark is going to be four inches away from where the bend is going to start. Remember, we've got the lead in right here, 7 8. So, what you're going to do is when you put this tube into the bender, remember this bend is not here, we just got that mark, right? We're going to load it up into the bender, the proper orientation, so it'll give us our bend, but that particular mark, we're going to move it the four inches of where it is on your bendicator minus the lead-in value. So if the lead-in is seven-eighths of an inch, four inches minus seven-eighths, we got three and an eighth inches. That's when we load this pipe into our bender, that mark will be three and an eighth inches away from the saw cut edge. Four inches minus seven-eighths, three and an eighth away from this. That gives us four inches at the actual start tangent point of the bend. That is the entire principle of the bendicator. You now know it all. There's really nothing else to talk about. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start planning our next tutorial video. Um, I hope this has answered all of your questions. If not, um, the email support, getting through on the phone is really hard. We've, we've only got a limited number of tech people back there. Right now we're, we're, we're trying to get by with one to three. Just email the question. If I have to, I'll reshoot the video. No big deal. But anyway, Thanks for um, tuning in. I hope this helped you out a little bit. Um, have a great night. Goodbye.